we have found a rotor tiller up here in the woods. And here it is. In action. We're going to drag her out of here. Ah, we're going to drag her out. <laughs> Okay, we got her down the hill and out of the woods. Now we just got to get it up in the truck. It's going to be fun. Okay, we got her home. That was rough. And now I'm going to blow it off for a little bit before we get in the garage and make a mess. Look at all this stuff in here. Look at this. Look at that mess right there. All right, we got it in the garage. Pump the tires up on it. And uh, they actually hold air for the time being anyway. So that's pretty good. I'm not sure what all these levers do. I never owned one of these before. Uh, it's got this, look at this big handle on here. Motor's not locked up. So that's just one good sign. There we go. But uh, we're gonna check it out. Hopefully we're gonna at least try to get it running. Right now, I can't get it out of gear. And I'm not sure how all this operates, but we'll figure it out. Figure out the nomenclature of it, if you will. And why wouldn't you? This little tiller was given to me free by a friend of mine, and uh, so I don't have anything in it, and I'd like to keep it that way. Uh, hopefully I can get it running without spending a whole bunch of money on it. We'll see. I think some kind of ants or something built a nest in this thing. This stuff didn't just settle in here. It's been carried in here and packed in here. I'll get her cleaned out, though. Day two of working on this old uh, Troy built rotor tiller that we drug in and I'm finding out things I'm learning. This for sure is not the right motor that goes on here. This is a Tecumseh, uh, I think it's a HSSK50, it's a five horsepower, that's a step shaft and we've seen the big pulley, big pull rope thing on it there. That's for a snow blower. So this is an old snow blower motor, it's got a step shaft on it. It's got this two piece pulley mess. Now that's fine and dandy, but that's not going to work on a Troy belt, okay? I'm not even going to try to put it on there right now. Shoot, you know what I need to do? I need to go get another one! So I went and got this one. This one has the right big 8 horsepower to come on. You see how much bigger it is? Look at this. Look at this mess right here. Look at that. Look how much bigger that is. That's 8 honking horsepower right there. Also, this this bad dude, it has, uh, you can kick the tines in and out. This is a little bit newer model, I believe. It has some issues. It didn't run, didn't run when I got it, but I got it running. And uh, I'll show you a little video of that right here. Uh-oh, we're gonna take grounded. That ain't good. Uh-oh. I don't believe it needs all that choking mess. Got it running, but uh, it needs it's, it has a few issues too. The tines on it, look at this. Let me look at the tines on this thing. This is the one, this is the original one. Look at these tines, those are in decent shape. Now, check this out. Look at the tines on this one. Mm -mm -mm. Hmm, let's see, what am I gonna do? I brought home one piece of junk and it had the wrong motor on it and everything and it's not gonna be able to function. So then I went and got another piece of junk and uh, it wasn't worth dragging home either. And it had the problems, the times were on, but wait a minute, I know what, I know what I can do. I'll do what junk men and tinkerers have been doing for eons since the settlers come over on the Mayflower. Take two and make one. See what you do is you get two pieces of junk that you've piled in on top of yourself and, and, and you combine the two and you make one big piece of junk 
that you spent a bunch of money on. Sure. <laughs> and it doesn't work either, probably. But anyway, this is a good idea. Let's go for it. The first thing I wanted to do was take them both apart and scatter the parts all over the garage. But I had to cut this wheel off, then split this hub and pull it off there and it fought all the way. Luckily, I've got the wheels on this one which come off real easy. So I'll use them. And I'm cleaning this thing up, changing parts around, doing a little painting. This is not a full boogie restoration. This is just an equipment style paint. Sand it down a little bit, paint it. It's looking better. I've got these wheels on here, new throttle cable, new air filter assembly and air filter, new pull rope assembly. Got it cleaned up, changed the oil twice. Got some new belts. It needed those. And got the bumper back on here. We're still working on it. Oh yeah, I even ordered some new decals. That's right, I go all out. Now, I got them on there. Looking better and better. Oh yeah. This will tell me how to operate this thing, because I don't know. And I moved the kill switch up here on the what I call the dash, instead of on the motor. I like that feature. Got this in here, kind of explains things, but we're going to try it out now. How about that? Okay, I have freewheeled this thing all the way over here to a spot that looks like it hasn't never been tilled. And uh, we're going to try it out. I haven't started it up, warmed it up or anything. And I'm just uh, trusting my ability to get things running, and uh, let's see what happens. Uh, no. What in the wide, wide world of sports was going on there? Well, I'll tell you what was going on. I had to put a new spring on it. Uh, this is the one that was on it. It was kind of weak, and uh, it was broke, and I didn't notice that. Should have, could have, would have fixed that when I was working on it in the first place. That's what holds this little cam down here on this block, keeps the belts tight when you push that lever down. But I fixed it on the fly, and we tried it again. <laughs> Freewheel thing comes in handy. <laughs> <laughs>